Back in October, it was reported that China has achieved the first ever exascale level supercomputing capabilities on two independent machines, one of which is its Sunway, Oceanlight, system, which is totally built with Chinese components, from CPU to network. This would herald a new period in computing history in which the United States would no longer be the dominant power. While few architectural details have been released thus far, a paper published today outlines the compute, memory, and other aspects, as well as demonstrating the capabilities via a system spanning AI workload for a pre-trained language model with 14.5 trillion parameters and mixed precision performance of over one exaflop. According to the article, the system contains as many as 96,000 nodes, and is based on Sunway SW26010PRO computing units, many core with built-in proprietary accelerators, bespoke memory configuration, and a native network fabric. Although the findings of the exascale achievement utilizing the supercomputing standard top 500 inches benchmark were validated but not published, it is crucial to remember that this brain scale task is not operating at full exascale capabilities. The standard in supercomputing performance measures a 64-bit floating point, FP64, although this work used mixed precision. The new Sunway system is capable of handling FP64, FP16, and BF16 and may switch between them during training for optimal efficiency. Even though mixed precision prevents this from being a true sustained exascale workload in traditional terms, it does demonstrate some impressive hardware, software co-design thinking especially as the supercomputing world grapples with how AI, ML is supposed to integrate with old-school modeling and simulation. The Chinese team gives specific chip and node-level information for optimizing HPC systems for AI, such as scheduling, memory, and I.O. operation optimizations, as well as a novel parallelization technique that combines parallel models and subsequently reduces computation time and memory utilization. They also created a unique load balancer and approach for efficiently exploiting mixed precision. The Ba Gua Lu model and optimization set enables excellent performance and scalability on extremely large models by integrating hardware-specific optimizations, hybrid parallel methods, and mixed precision training, according to the scientists. The authors, who include Alibaba personnel as well as professors from prominent Chinese institutions, go on to say that given present capabilities, a 174 trillion parameter model train is within reach. The scale and speed with which China has advanced technologically in recent years has raised concerns in Washington and elsewhere about the implications for the United States' overall economic competitiveness and national security, as well as the impact on liberal values and good governance around the world. There is also rising worry about the global technology sector's fragmentation, particularly the growth of conflicting standards and norms, as the Chinese technology market decouples from those of the United States and the West more widely. The scale and speed with which China has advanced technologically in recent years has raised concerns in Washington and elsewhere about the implications for the United States' overall economic competitiveness and national security, as well as the impact on liberal values and good governance globally. There is also growing concern about the global technology sector's fragmentation, notably the proliferation of competing standards and norms, as China's technology economy decouples from that of the United States and the West more broadly. The report adds a new voice to a rising clamor in the United States, warning that the U.S. is now in danger of being displaced as the world's top economic and technical power by China, this generation's Sputnik moment. When the Soviet Union launched the world's first Earth-orbiting satellite, Sputnik 1, in 1957, the United States was taken off guard. The event sparked a space race in the United States, culminating in the country's successful landing of the first human on the moon in 1969. According to the Harvard paper, China is already a full-spectrum peer rival of the US in AI, citing a comment from former Google CEO Eric Schmidt. It suggested that China is creating the intellectual basis for a generational edge in artificial intelligence. According to the research, China has six times more patent publications than the U.S. in deep learning, AI's trendiest topic. It quoted an Allen Institute for Artificial Intelligence Evaluation, which predicted that the United States will slide to second position in the top 1% of most cited AI publications by 2025. 
The unavoidable fact is that China's potential to become a semiconductor leader can no longer be dismissed, according to the research. On present trends, President Xi, Jinping, is more likely than not to achieve his aim of China being a top-tier participant in the semiconductor sector by 2030. According to the research, the U.S. retains control of critical supply chain choke points through businesses like as Applied Materials and LAM Research, which have 55% of the market share of chip production equipment, versus 2% for China, and 85% of electronic design automation software. This mutual reliance has benefited both nations' technological sectors. Every major Chinese technology business relies on American chips. Tencent and Alibaba would not be the powerhouses they are now if they had relied on Chinese microprocessors or designed and produced their own. Meanwhile, many American businesses have profited from Chinese clients, markets, and inventions. The scale and cost reductions provided by system and device manufacturing located in China and Asia more widely have contributed to the pervasiveness of information technology. Despite the heated rhetoric on both sides of the Pacific, American and Chinese semiconductor companies are already collaborating on hundreds, if not thousands, of product designs and collaborative technological development activities. Nonetheless, these agreements have not stopped semiconductors from becoming a focal point of tensions between the US and China. Many in Washington would want to see the American economy become less reliant on China in the post-COVID, post-Trump era, and are considering additional limits on Chinese hardware imports and exports of both cutting-edge semiconductors and the equipment necessary to create them. Meanwhile, in Beijing, officials are pursuing a clearly stated, though ambiguously defined, aim of technology independence, as described in the 14th five-year plan released last year. However, how to acquire such independence, and if seeking it makes sense in the first place, represents a very unsettled subject. As U.S. officials consider their policy choices in this respect, they must first establish a baseline understanding of the health of the Chinese and global semiconductor sectors, as well as how Beijing has approached its aim of developing a local chip-making business. Despite significant progress, most parts of China's semiconductor industry lag behind their overseas competitors, and efforts to catch up confront significant economic challenges. How the United States tackles its policy toward that industry will have far-reaching consequences not just for the United States' relationship with China, but also for the American semiconductor, systems, and internet services businesses, which remain inextricably linked to China. According to the study, China has become a formidable rival to the United States in biotechnology and green energy, owing to increasing efforts in research and development, industrial capabilities, and government-backed programs. While China is the world's leading emitter of greenhouse emissions, it is also a pioneer in the development of renewable energy. Don Rosenberg, a former general counsel at Qualcomm and Apple, as well as Google CEO Eric Schmidt, have both approved the Harvard findings. In a joint editorial article published in the Wall Street Journal on Wednesday, lead authors Allison and Schmidt stated that the paper isn't alarming, but yet finds that China has achieved such tremendous advances. So, what is your opinion on China having potentially surpassed the United States in terms of supercomputer capabilities? Do you think that this trend will continue or are the United States going to reclaim their crown? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.